death yes. today uh, registered. Can you give us uh, an update of where we are in Malta from the medical point okay. of view? From, uh, I'd like to give uh, an update from, from where we are here locally and then maybe proceed internationally yes, later, later, later round. So over here, as, as both Christy and Joe were saying, we are in our second wave. Now we had reserves for our first wave, but unfortunately the second wave was not managed uh, by Science, by scientists and by the medical profession, for sure. Um, because because uh, other countries which were many, where, where we had, uh, like Cyprus, for example, which was managed by the scientists, the medical profession, have not as yet had a second wave. And we call it a wave, not a spike. It's important to distinguish between a wave and a spike, because a wave means that we've had introduction of virus once again from overseas, which is what happened. Um, we, we, we cannot be sure, because we did not test people on their way in, it's as simple as that. So when somebody pops up and says, oh, well, the tourists we've tested have not shown a remarkable number of, 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 of COVID cases, well, the answer is, well, you did not test them. We did not test them. So at a time when uh, we should have been testing people who are incoming, either um, before departure or just after departure, which is now going to happen in the UK, by the way, in Iceland, we did not do that. The result was that the second wave in one month registered more cases than we had in, 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 in the, the preceding months altogether. And, 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 and as the, the MAM, our own union, said, and, and quite ready to action uh, this, time, this time around, uh, I'm obviously agreeing with, with our union on, on this case, uh, they said that, okay, you might be happy right now and say that there's not too many people in hospital, but there's a lag period of about four weeks. You were talking about testing, and, and, testing. And, and, yes. um, and, and the, the double procedure now. in yes. uh, Heathrow, Heathrow and Iceland. Exactly. Can you, can we talk a bit about <coughs> Well, that was tried in Iceland first. Mm -hmm. and, and you remember this program. On, on July the 14th, we were proposing something mm -hmm. similar, a double testing. We said it will cost 80 Yes, euros. you did, yourself. Actually, yes, the that's UK right. say, saying it's cost 120 pounds now, but with economies of scale, it will go down. So we expect it to go down. And what they're doing is they are in, they're, t t they're testing in, they're trying in Terminal 5 soon, and I think it's Terminal 2 now. Um, they are testing people as they uh, come in voluntarily as an option to them going into quarantine. So they're, they're doing a, a, swap, a similar swap test, except it's, it's a variant of, of a swap test. Uh, there are a number of tests around, I have to tell you, and, and they're becoming better and better and better as we go along. So what was not very efficient 15, 16 weeks ago is efficient nowadays. If you can pick up 85% of cases, you're doing very well because it depends, once again, on how long you've had the infection for. So they're testing now and they're testing after a period of about six, seven days. So your quarantine period comes down. So uh, that is, that's the idea. That's the, that's the double test. Um, obviously, if you're positive straight away, you're off to quarantine. I have a question from mm. uh, some viewers. Yes. They wanted me to ask you if the self-isolation is actually being enforced in Malta. Self-isolation. Well, it, the problem is once you've got these hundreds of cases with hundreds of contacts now, uh, people who have been allowed to go to mass events, which should never have happened. We never even imagined mass events would happen. Mass events have killed the tourist industry. I think, in my opinion, whether they were official or unofficial. Why? We, somebody benefited for a brief month, and then all these middle-class families with children and whatever who would have otherwise come um, have, have, uh, you know, were unable to come. You know, they're the ones who would have brought in most money to our economy and occupied our hotels, our high-grade hotels. Now, somebody obviously was doing better with these mass events, but there would be, have been a, a small number of people. And how we could have imagined that we're going to have tw a mass event with 20,000 people coming in September is beyond me, to be honest. Okay? So anyway, be this it may, mass events should not happen. We still have not recovered from our second wave. We're going to need at least another four weeks to recover from this wave to bring it under control. But we have now, today, introduced another variable. And once you get another variable, you don't really know its outcome for another two weeks. And the other, that other variable is the introduction of cruise liners coming into Malta. And, and no matter what protocols you introduce or mechanisms or whatever, you're going to have a problem because, I mean, at, at present we are a small densely populated island under siege and as we always used to say if the, we're okay as long as the walls hold if they breach we're in trouble um, talking about variables um, this morning professor uh, vincent marmara put together um, an analysis of the statistics as they stand today and we're going to share it with you and then um, hear the comments from our guests
Thanks for this opportunity to provide this information with regards to the COVID-19 situation here in Malta. During this past week, we saw an increase in the total number of COVID-19 cases. But during these past um, three, four days, we saw a decrease in the total number of daily cases. Although this decrease, when comparing week on week, we still saw an increase in the total number of positive COVID-19 cases. But in order to put the numbers into further and into a more real picture, one has to compare as well with the total number of swap tests that are being carried out. In fact, during this past week, from the total swap tests that were carried out, we found 2.2% positive cases, while during the previous week, this was equal to 2.1%. So we saw a slight increase in that regard if we had to compare the total positive cases from the total swap test. And this is important information regarding the number of swap tests that are being carried out here in Malta. In fact, when comparing Malta with other European countries since the first day of the pandemic, one can see that Malta is one of the top countries in the, in the European Union that are carrying out swap tests. And this is uh, very important. And uh, I think this was one of uh, our main elements to control the pandemic in Malta, especially during the first cycle, even with regards to the death rate. Okay? So Malta, when comparing Malta with other European countries, Malta is one of the least countries that reported deaths when compared to our population size, obviously to have a clear baseline and a clear overview to compare like with like with other countries. All this information is, import, is important when applying mathematical modeling. And uh, in fact, when we apply the modeling techniques, there are a number of factors that are being taken into account, including the reporting rate, the level of swabs that are being carried out, the importation rate. All this information is important. In fact, in order to calculate the R factor, this is something which is purely based on a mathematical technique. In fact, in my case, I am using an SCIR model together with a particle filtering algorithm. Currently, the R factor is between 1.5 and 1.6. So by presenting previously the positive side, the positive numbers and the positive information, it doesn't mean that we should be ignoring the negative side of the pandemic. And in fact, as I always insist, as long as the R factor, it is greater than one. So all the um, necessary measures regarding the social distancing and all the other measures that are being published by the health authorities, these are all important. In fact, as I always insist, an R factor greater than one, it means that we need to be extremely cautious in order to control the pandemic as much as possible. And everyone has an important role in this, okay? All the restrictive measures are important, but for everyone to apply the necessary social distancing is extremely important in order to control this pandemic as much as possible. That was Dr. Vincent Marmara with an update of today's statistics. We're going for a short, short commercial break and we'll see you very soon.